Loops in SAS are excellent for taking what could be a very large task in CSS and make it simple and easy. Line up your values, maybe in a list or a map, and let them easily be produced in the format of your choosing. Loops will take your coding time down dramatically. And this is where we really start to unlock the power of SAS. So SAS gives us three types of loops. We have the for loop, we have the each loop, and we have the while loop. Now, loops are absolutely fantastic. We can see here with just three lines of code, it has outputted all of this CSS. And this really does demonstrate the power of SAS and using loops to save a tremendous amount of time. Now, these three lines really are producing all of that CSS code. We're not even including any of our variables yet, but the task is simple for us. What we need to do is we need to loop through all of the different header types. So we have header one all the way to header six, and then we need to apply font sizes ranging from 55 pixels for the header one all the way down to 25 pixels for the header six. Before we begin completing that task, let's examine the for loop syntax. To declare a for loop, just type in the at symbol and then type in for. Then we can either pass in a variable or we could create a variable within the for loop. It's entirely up to you, but please do note if you do pass in a variable, it will alter the variable's value. This variable holds the initial value and is incremented each time we loop until we reach the final value. We have told this for loop to take the variable i that we created within the for loop and start with the value one. Then each time it's gonna loop through and add one. So we start at one, then we go to two, three, four, five, and then we get to the final value six. So we start from one and go through to six, and then we stop. Now it's important to note that the values that you assign to the variable within the for loop, which is the starting and ending value, must be a whole number and nothing else is allowed. Inside of the parentheses, we have the code that is going to be executed every loop. Within a for loop, you can use anything you would like, including math operators, functions, mixins, variables, if statements, and more. And in our case, the loop will produce a simple CSS selector, and within each selector produced is the font size property. Each selector starts with the letter H, and then we are including the variable i within the CSS selector. So in order to include that variable in the selector, we've escaped it with the hash and then the opening and closing parentheses. So we declared variable i with the starting value of one. So the first loop produced the selector that targets a header one tag or h1. Then the loop increments the i variable to two. So it just adds one, and it produces the next selector which targets the header two tag. This process then continues until the variable i has reached the final value of six. Then once it reaches the final value, it loops for one last time, producing the header six CSS selector and then stops. SAS will also recognize that if I was to start with a larger integer of six and finish on a smaller integer of one, it would reverse the process and de-increment our variable by subtracting one every loop. So this will produce the same results, but in reverse. Now let's include other variables such as our lists into the process. We want to use the nth list function to grab incrementally each value from our headers and font size lists. This should produce the correct CSS header selector and its corresponding font size value. So let's start with the selector and what we want to do is put in the hash in the parentheses to escape the output of the nth list function, like we do with variables in CSS selectors. Otherwise, if we don't, we'll get an error. So inside of those parentheses, we call the nth list function, then we target the headers list, and finally, we utilize the i variable 
and that i variable is being incremented or de-incremented and this will allow us to target a certain value within the list and as we loop through it's going to target a different value in the list after that we open another set of parentheses where our css properties will reside and include the font size css property then we use the nth list function again but this time target the font size list and again use the variable i to target a certain value within that list so the variable i starts with the value of six this means that on the first loop it's going to target the sixth value of the headers variable then it's going to do the same thing for the font size list and target the sixth value so header 6 is 25 pixels header 5 30 pixels and it just de-increments and so on and so forth till we get to header 1 and then it goes for the last time and stops we can also use math operators in our for loop so let's put in the line height and use the same value from the font size list but then add 10 onto it we also don't have to manually type in the ending and starting integers within the for loop instead we could store those values in variables and call them back this is useful because i can create another variable that uses the length list function that targets the headers list and counts how many values there are in that list and returns the integer six this is then stored in that variable and i can call it back within the for loop now let's take a look at the each loop this loop will look at each value within a list group of lists or map and produce the outcome as expected to start the each loop we just type in at each then we can create a variable or variables within the loop or we can call back a variable or variables and have their values reassigned in my case i'll create the variable head within the loop then we use in and define a list map or group of lists but in our case we'll start off simple with a single list the each loop will target a single value in our list and assign it to the variable head we can then use the head variable to return each value within our list so it's going to look at the first value in that list which is header one it's going to assign it to the head variable and it's going to produce the following code then it's going to loop through again it's going to look at the second value in the list take that second value assign it to the head variable and produce the second lot of code and then it goes all the way through to the final value in the list assigns that final value to the variable and produces the code like so and then it stops so hopefully now you can sort of see how each works but also i don't have to declare this list right here in the loop I already have the list declared in the headers variable so i can say headers so what it's going to do is it's going to grab all of the list values from the headers list and it's going to look at each value and each value is going to be assigned separately to the head variable every time we loop through and it will produce exactly the same code if i save it you'll notice it won't produce any errors and there we go now unfortunately it's not that simple if we want to include multiple lists so for example we have the font size so i've got the head and each value within the headers list is being iterated through and assigned to the head variable so maybe we can add in perhaps another variable and i'll declare this variable inside of the each loop again and we'll call it font and then we say in so now we have the headers list which will be passed into the head variable for each value then we'll put in a comma right here and then we'll type in font size so this is the second list and each value from the second list will be applied to the second variable or so you would have thought but if you save it you will get an error so unfortunately you're not allowed to do this when it comes to multiple lists to solve this problem we can define sets of data to be passed in on each loop so we need to use brackets and define two values separated by a comma for the two variables head and font then to pass in a second set of data i will put in a comma and then add in another set of brackets with again two values now you can keep going in this fashion and add more blocks of data in there to loop through but i will stop here and review the output 
So once I save it, you'll notice we get header 1 and header 2 and we have a font size of 55 pixels and 55 pixels. So the header 1 and header 2 is working perfectly because they're each being passed into the head variable and the head variable is being printed out in the CSS selector. However, we're not utilizing the font variable. So what I'd like to do is put in the dollar sign font and then just go ahead and save it. And now you'll notice we have 55 pixels. Then it goes down to the second set and that's 50 pixels. So all it's doing is it's taking the data within the brackets and assigning it to the relevant variable. And then we can use those variables in the loop. And let's pass in another set of data. So I'll pass in another variable called color. And then we need to add in an extra piece of data into our data sets or brackets. So now we have three values within the brackets. Then I'm just going to add in a CSS property color and then call back the color variable. Now let's go back to just two values and use a map. So working with two sets of data allows us to use the map syntax where the key is the first value and then you have the second value which is the value of the key so in my case the first value is the headers so header one header two and then the keys value is the pixel value of the header and so once i have created the map i can call that variable back that contains the map and it will then pass out the data finally we have the while loop that will continuously loop through until the statement is false. For example, we have the variable index that has the initial value of one. And each time we loop through, we increment the variable by one. Note that we increment the variable manually within the loop. So what we do is we call it back on itself and then we add one each time we loop through. But the current statement only loops through five times. But why is this? Well, the current statement checks to see if index is less than six. So when the index variable is incremented to five, then loops through and adds one again, so now index equals six, it's then no longer less than six, which is making the statement false and it doesn't loop through. So to solve the problem, I'll state that I want the index variable to either be less than or equal to six. So when the index variable is equal to six, the statement remains true and loops through the last time and produces the code we're looking for. Now that we've solved the problem, let's use the index variable to target certain values within the headers and font size lists, which we've done already in the for loop. So I'll go ahead and insert the code as I did before, and it will produce the following output. So hopefully now you can see the power of loops and how much time they really can save you. So please have a play around and don't forget your loops can contain if statements, variables, mixins, functions like list functions and all the other SAS script functions. And you can really begin to see the power of loops. And again, we have the SAS syntax, again, all the same functionality, but it's just a different style. We omit the ending semicolons and also we don't have the parentheses for the encapsulation and we just have indentation. So thank you for watching and happy looping.